Alright everyone, how you doing today? We got ourselves a 97 Honda Civic and uh, it has a blown gasket. How do I know that? Because this is what happened. When I was driving, the uh, car got started to smoke and then overheated a little bit. And uh, when it overheated, it uh, had to pull over only to find out that I had this amazing amount of oil mixture. You kind of see it here, remnants of it. It's a couple days later, but it was all splattered right here. Right? It was like oil and uh, coolant mixture. So I decided to, so what happened was uh, this top hose here got so hot with oil coming out of the motor that it hits because the, the warm coolant comes back in here to get cool and from the top hose in the radiator. But right here in the radiator, right, this back part here, had a big gaping hole because it got so hot it just melted the, uh, the plastic. So I decided to switch the radiator and just run it for a little bit and see what happened. I ended up, I've noticed when I was filling it up and I had a car running, there was oil coming in. So that just verified to me that we have ourselves a blown gasket, a uh, valve, co uh, valve cover gas, I'm sorry, head cover gasket. So my concern is, right, I live in a Rust Belt area. It's this, this uh, exhaust manifold, I think it's gonna be a big, big, big problem for me. To get off so I'm gonna walk you through the process we're going to see how successful we are see if we can save this Honda all right let me show you something that happened so this is the radiator and this is the uh, upper hose the upper hose brings the warm coolant back to be cooled and then it gets cool in the radiator and it exits back into the engine block the cooler stuff so it just goes around in a circle right that's why when you know you, you can squeeze your upper uh, radiator hose to see if it's like warm if it's warm that means most likely your uh, your thermostat's not trapped in an open position that's one of the ways you can test to see if your uh, thermostat has failed so this would happen right it got so hot uh, when the, when a gasket blew that my head gasket that is on the Honda Civic 1997 D16Y7 engine that so this is the uh, this side is the towards the car this is away from the car right you can see right here it just melted it right the oil was so hot because the oil was being just just bypassing the gasket and coming right into the uh into the uh, uh coolant system at a really high hot temperature just melted right here so that's what happened i wanted you to see it kind of sucked but yeah the uh hot oil head gasket blew, damaged a lot of things all right so i had to replace the uh radiator Oh. First thing I want to, I want to jack this up because I need to get underneath it. But I want to show you where I'm going to jack it from. I want to jack it up from right underneath this transmission, this big block right here, part. And yeah, underneath. Oh shh. Uh, so it's hard to see here, but it's that part right over there. To right here to the left of the muffler so i'll put my jack there you'll see it i'll show it to you when i'll, I'll bring Next thing you want to do is turn the steering wheel on your driver's side to your left so we can get access to the uh, um, 
bolt to turn the engine over. I'll show you what it looks like. That right there, I'm trying to get inside of that little hole with a 17 millimeter. Uh, this isn't necessary, but some of you might want to label your spark plug wires. They're, it's pretty self-explanatory because the shortest one is going to be the, um, you know, East cylinder four, three, two, one. So let's label these. And there's only four cylinders, so you don't need to do a fourth label. So pull these off. So much usually means it got really hot in that cylinder chamber. And this one also. I need some pliers for those. It's <laughs> gonna be a fight. Going to be a So we have ourselves a, uh, this is a uh, 5 8 socket, so we're going to take the uh, spark plug out of, uh, out of the cylinder number one first, and we're going to try to set this to uh, top dead center. That's what that spark plug looks like. You can see it got pretty hot. That is melted plastic on that, wow. Let's see what some of wrong looks like. Yeah, it melted out inside of there. So it got pretty hot when it was inside. All right, cool. I want to share this is set up. I got a, uh, this is a uh, regular old balloon, right? And we have something, something, a screwdriver, an extension that can fit inside of the cylinder all the way down. So it touches the top of the cylinder head. Right? We need something as long as that. And this is just a, uh, Compression test kit. That's all that is. So take this and screw it into the cylinder number one. This is a first, second, third, fourth cylinder. Screw it in. Okay. And we're trying to get this on the compression stroke. So when the compression stroke means it's when it squeezes air and fuel mixture together before it ignites. 
when we when we're trying to get that all the way up the cylinder head all the way to the very top and then that will know that's the top dead center okay so to do that I'll show you on the other side okay on this side right the driver's side you have a 17 millimeter socket an extension and you're gonna use this inside of that hole right there again this is 17 so you can see if you can see okay. 17 millimeters okay Take your 17 millimeter. Okay, you're gonna turn. Look, you're gonna turn as if you're moving forwards. This way, forwards. Turn it this way. Okay, as if you're driving forwards. That's the direction you want to turn it. Very important. So slide that in. Yeah, you'll feel it. There you go. I'm on. I'm on it right now. Okay. So. This is the part I wanted you to see. So that's the uh, compression stroke because the balloon's inflated now. Okay, so now that we have that in position, let's try to see if we can get this in top dead center. So to do that, goes I want to get it at the very very top where it doesn't go down anymore okay I'm gonna turn it this way just counterclockwise Let's do this again. I don't like what I, don't like what I see. Well, let's try this again.
let's see if we can uh, work with this. So that's the compression stroke. This feels pretty high already. And that's why it's tricks it tricks me. You know. So watch the top of it. Back off just a little bit as the side drop down. I'm gonna go and turn the steering wheel clockwise. Yeah. I mean the steering wheel, but the uh, bolt. That's it. goes well that should be top this soon. I should try to spray these bolts in advance because they're a little on the uh, frozen side. I'm gonna spray the oxygen sensor also. I'm gonna try not to remove it because it's a little difficult to get back and once you take it off usually it breaks off. So I'll let that sit and then we're gonna pull off the um, uh, let's get the other spark plugs out of the way. Get a bag, put them in here. Um, just thinking before I pull the spark plugs out, let's clean that out a little bit.
Okay, that is a uh, 10 millimeter. It's a little hard to see, but it's a 10 millimeter. Yeah, it's erased. Look at this is a 10 millimeter. Without a Drain the coolant. Do that. Hey, what's, what's up, dude? Hey, down. So do that. Take the cap off. So the air pressure, right? <sighs> right here. That is a valve here. We just turn that on the radiator. It's the bottom of the radiator. So try to do that without getting my stuff too wet here. Let's see, so I reached my hand underneath the engine guard. Turn left. Got my drain pan here. Hopefully I won't miss. Let's see, come on. Okay, that's good. Okay. So if you look closely, you'll see that the coolant is very uh, brown. That coolant has no miles in it, it's just brand new. You can see that it's a little brownish. So, anyway, that's how you know your, uh, head, your head gasket's blown. So, let that drip out and we'll uh, get rid of the other stuff. While that drains down below, I want to continue pulling some of these hoses off. So this is a top radiator hose. There's going to be a lot of coolant coming out of here. I'm doing this because I need to get all this as much stuff away from here. There's going to be coolant coming out of here, so my coolant pan is underneath. I'll catch it, but maybe not. Now that gives me access to uh, to remove the uh, the oxygen sensor here has uh, uh, so it's the oxygen sensor here. I'm just gonna slide that off of that hook, and then we're just gonna try to unclip it instead of like unscrew it. Eventually, I'm gonna have to replace that exhaust manifold. I don't know what the conditions are right now. So. So you can get away with uh, just unclipping it, maybe.
famous hand in the way shot. My favorite. This is on just kind of attached to the I'm trying to slide it off of the uh, little holder right here. All right, so we got a, I'm gonna go a different route. I have a 22 millimeter, uh, this is a uh, 7 8 uh, uh, you can see it, sorry. 7 8, seven eight s s s s <laughs> oxygen sensor wrench. So we'll take that. I'm gonna try to unscrew the oxygen sensor. Not ideal, but whatever. I don't want to break any uh, of the plastic stuff, so. This takes a 38 on top of it. So you slide that onto
heat shield off. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. They give me more That came from C1. Let's try to unscrew this uh, heat shield. I'm gonna give me more room to uh, turn this instead of what I'm doing. Uh, I'm an umskull. Just let you know, this is what I'm using. To this is an oxygen sensor set, OEM tools for professional oxygen sensor socket kit, twenty seven one one zero. We have a 12 millimeter socket, and I'm gonna use that to try to remove those bolts at the top of the exhaust. They feel, this 12 millimeter feels a little loose, so I'm not really sure. I don't think it's the right size. Let's give it a try. They tighten sometimes to get to break them loose. Tighten and then you loosen again. <sighs> tighten it up. Loosen again. So that's a little tight. We're gonna try something else.
that's going to be stripped. Uh, we're going to try this. I'm going to use the uh, bolt extractor, Irwin bolt extractor, and we're going to use the uh, 12 millimeter bolt extractor. And uh, before we do that, let's try it again. We're going to heat it up, and then uh, with the impact, we're going to try to take that off. So, see how much further we get. Really, 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 really recommend you get one of these. What a waste of time. We still had to uh, try to have more room. Nothing's a waste. Okay, that's one hell of a job. That's oxygen sensors out. Spray these and let them sit for a little bit. Some people recommend they do it over many days. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts. 
And um, some of you might have, uh, let's let you know, I'll show you. So some of you might have a, uh, get a see right here. So right here, that hole, and right here, there's a, in the engine block, there's usually a bracket that holds this muffler on. That's already removed, so they already, whoever worked on this car before just to screw it, pull it off and then put it back on. Must have been pretty bad. So you might want to pull that off. You're going to have to pull it off just to make this loose enough so you can move it around. I might have to go underneath and actually um, unscrew some bolts from the body of the uh, muffler also just to give this a little bit more range of motion. But we'll, we'll see what we can do. Since the uh, coolant has is done drip, dripping, uh, we're gonna pull it out so you can take a look. So that black stuff, that's oil. I'm gonna close it up underneath the radiator. So you take a look, you can see all the, the black swirly stuff inside of that. That's supposed to be green. See the black swirl? That's oil. That's not supposed to be in there. And then that's not from the pan. The pan is perfectly clean. So if you have that, you have a blown head gasket in your, uh, if you have oily, oil in your uh, coolant, you have a blown head gasket. So we have a whole bunch of 12 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, that holds this in place. I kind of broke a few of them just to see how hard it was. And that they're pretty easy. They're not too bad. I thought this was going to be a lot worse. We need an extension for that. was awesome. No fighting whatsoever. I'll be damned. I thought this was going to be the hardest part of the project. To be honest with you. Alright, so I'm going to spin these all off. Now this is a 12 millimeter and uh, this is a qu I went to quarter inch so I can try to spin these off a little faster.
to I'm doing all the bottom ones first since I have the uh, extension on it. That's why. Pull the stud with it. Okay. I'm gonna have to replace all of those anyway, so I don't mind. How easy you think you're gonna you can find that one? So where? Where did you fall? Come on. Okay. Alright, that one doesn't want to play nice. I'll get it. Okay, so this is what we're talking about, this is what we're looking at. Those are going to be have. Those are going to have to be replaced. You don't want to reuse them. I'm going to have to try to pull the studs out also. Uh, you want to show you. Uh, let's put those in the bag. All right. Right here, if you look closely, you can see that there is a crack on the. Um, Exhaust manifold and catalytic converter all in one. See that crack right across the middle? So I'm gonna put this back together, test it, make sure that the uh, repair was the main thing that we focused on was <laughs> was the the blown out um, head gasket. And then we're gonna replace this also. So we'll do it as a separate video. The exhaust manifold that is. So we can't get this uh, past the uh, studs because the um, it's held up on the knee. So we have to unscrew on the knee and uh, give us a little bit more space. So let's see what that what ventures await. Okay, so we have uh, these two uh, 12 millimeter bolts. And I'm using a, today's my last day, I'm not gonna have a 3 8 impact socket set. This is just getting silly. The uh, half inch is just too wide. Usually it doesn't fit, so. Let's see if we can get these off. These are, this is, a, this is 12. Give us enough room to like maneuver the uh, the uh, muffler. I mean the uh, Kellett converter slash exhaust manifold that around. So we'll put those two exhaust bolts by themselves in the bag. There we go. Okay, 
So that's off. Alright, so we have a gasket here. So that's that. Is there anything special about this gasket? surface here is going to need a good cleaning. It's got some uh, obvious like uh, burnt carbon, hydrocarbon fuel kind of just escaped. So it's made a nice little soot. Okay, all right, so that's... This is the uh, 10 millimeter bolt, uh, I mean socket. You can't really see it anymore. It is a 10 millimeter. Pull off the, uh, the head of the uh, valve. You should always pull off the center first. I think I might I might have this wrong, but there's a proper way to do this. So don't don't go too much too fast because you don't want to warp anything. It's gonna break them. I'll definitely get it right for the uh, when I pull off the bolts below. Let's get the uh, get that hose out of the way. Man, it's not it's not it's not even trash day, man. These people are like dumping all over the place. He doesn't oh. like it. He cleaned up that alley right there. I'm just saying, what's good? He cleaned up the alley because people dumped it. He upstairs. Oh. He dumped okay, he okay, cleaned bro, up bro, that bro, up. Bro, bro, I got you. Yeah. I got you, bro. Alright. I appreciate it. I trash today. That's what I said you it. live around <laughs> here. Come on, man. I, trash. I got day it is, bro. I trash is always on trash is always Monday morning.
really sad about having to pull this off because I did a really good job sealing this up. And I got it, but it wasn't even, it didn't leak at all. And uh, the way you do that is uh, by placing in the corner one, two, three, four. In these corners right here, you place a, uh, a gray, any sort of like RTV like gasket material. If you do that, and you do this repair, it won't leak anymore from this gasket. It's pretty amazing if you ask me. So again, you see it's, it's like right here on that stuff. Honda Bond you can also use. I think that's what it's called. All right, but I just used a, a RTV. Okay, so we have that removed. Let's take the uh, dipstick out. I broke it off the top so I'm gonna have to gonna have to replace it. Right. So step stick. That tube is loose. So it needs a new gasket. So I'm gonna put all this together like that. I'll put that in here. And uh, I'm almost running out of light so I have to continue tomorrow. Keeping the timing on this is a little tricky, right? So you gotta do a couple things because I, I try not to like, rem we try not to do the belt or mess the timing up too badly. So I'm trying to, I'm gonna mark it from the top and the side. So if we go back here, I'm gonna make a line. We have three lines. Over here. And that way, when I know I put that back on, I know for sure what position that was in, in the back. All right. I'll also mark it again from the top. 